let's derive a confidence interval for the ratio of population variances. We're going to work out the appropriate confidence interval formula when we are sampling from normally distributed populations, but I don't do any calculations or look at any examples. Suppose we are about to sample n1 independent observations from a normally distributed population that has a variance of sigma1 squared, and n2 independent observations from a normally distributed population that has a variance of sigma2 squared, and suppose these two samples are independent. And we intend to use the ratio of sample variances s1 squared over s2 squared to estimate the ratio of population variances sigma1 squared over sigma2 squared. The ratio of sample variances is a random variable that will eventually take on a value once we draw the samples. And the ratio of population variances is a fixed unknown quantity that we are trying to estimate. Under these conditions, then this quantity, s1 squared over sigma1 squared, divided by s2 squared over sigma2 squared, has an f distribution with n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 degrees of freedom and we're going to use that property to construct the appropriate confidence interval. When we are about to draw the samples, this quantity in the middle has an f distribution with n1-1 and n2-1 degrees of freedom. This quantity in the middle is a random variable because s1 squared and s2 squared are random variables. Sigma1 squared and sigma2 squared are not random variables, they are fixed values f sub alpha over 2 and f sub 1 minus alpha over 2 are the appropriate quantiles from the f distribution with n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 degrees of freedom. I've drawn in an f distribution here. f sub alpha over 2 is the f value that has an area to the right of alpha over 2, and f sub 1 minus alpha over 2 is the f value that has an area to the left of alpha over 2. The probability that this quantity in the middle takes on a value between these two f values is 1 minus alpha. Now we're going to isolate sigma1 squared over sigma2 squared because that's what we want a confidence interval for. At first I'm going to rewrite this middle part. When we divide by a fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal, so this middle quantity can be expressed this way. And to isolate this ratio, we need to divide by s1 squared over s2 squared, which is the same as multiplying by s2 squared over s1 squared. So we end up with this. Now we'd be close to done if we were looking for a confidence interval for sigma2 squared over sigma1 squared. But we actually wanted an interval for the ratio with sigma1 squared on top. So we're going to take the reciprocals of these three quantities. But when we do that, these inequalities are going to change direction. For example, 1 half is less than 4 thirds, but when we take the reciprocals, 2 over 1 is greater than 3 quarters. So we're going to take the reciprocals of these three quantities and change the direction of the inequalities. The result is this, but it's better form to put the smaller value, which is this quantity, on the left. So we'll just move that to the left, and we end up with this. So when we are about to draw our samples, the probability that this ratio, sigma1 squared over sigma2 squared, gets captured between these two quantities is 1 minus alpha. And when we draw the samples, then the sample variances s1 squared and s2 squared will take on values, and we can calculate these quantities on the left and the right. Once we draw the samples, this quantity on the left will be the lower bound of a 1 minus alpha confidence interval for the ratio of population variances, and this quantity on the right will be the upper bound of the interval. And so that is why this interval represents a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for the ratio of population variances.